Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. So, you want to write a MAUI app. MAUI lets you write an application once and run it on Windows, on a Mac desktop, on iPhones and iPads, and on Android devices. Great. But now you have another choice. Do you want to write your UI markup using MAUI XAML, which is based on Xamarin Forms XAML, or do you want to write it using the Blazor component model? That's right. You can write MAUI apps using Blazor and everything that comes with it. Surely there are differences in the final product, right? Surely there are things that one can do that the other can't, right? These are the questions I'll attempt to answer coming right up on the .NET Show. Okay, I've installed a brand new uh, Visual Studio 2022 preview in a brand new Azure VM. And if you want to know how I did that, go see episode 11, Build Maui Apps in an Azure VM. I've passed through my phone. So you can see my Samsung is my local phone. And through this uh, USB for remote desktop application, I'm able to pass that through. So we're going to create two projects. One is going to be a Maui Blazor application, and the other is going to be a Maui XAML application. And we're just going to compare and contrast, okay? And I know you know I'm a Blazor guy, but I've done Xamarin Forms for years and years and years. So, so I'm going to try to be completely neutral and just give you the facts. You decide for yourself what you want to do. So the first one will be a Blazor project. So you can see here, if I select MAUI over here, I have three options. A .NET MAUI app, which is using XAML. A .NET MAUI Blazor app, which is using Blazor. And then a .NET MAUI class library, which is just code. So we're going to select .NET MAUI Blazor. And I'm going to call this MAUI Blazor Demo. So we're going to start off by using Windows, WinUI. In order to do that, you have to go into the project file, the csproj file, and uncomment the second line here. This second line gives you access to the Windows platform. Okay? Now, I'm going to go up to the top here and select Windows as the framework. And you can see iOS is selected right now. So we're going to select .NET 6.0 Windows 10. See that right there? Now, right out of the bat, I can just run this, and we'll get a little Windows application up and running here. We got the counter page. We got fetch data. You know, it's the Blazor template, but in a Windows app. Okay, now I'm going to remove everything that I don't want. Let's start with Maui program. So if this was a Blazor application uh, in .NET 5, you'd see a startup or program. If it's .NET 6, you'd see program. But it's the same kind of deal. You get the, the builder, and you can add services with the builder. We don't need weather forecast service. We're going to take that out. We're also going to take out Maui Blazor demo data. And in fact, that whole data folder. Now I'll go to my pages. I'm going to delete counter and fetch data because I don't want them in my project. And I'm going to go to shared and get rid of survey prompt and the nav menu. And in the main layout, I'm going to just simply do this. Okay. I've got a single div. I put a padding of 50 pixels around it and we get the body. Everything is in there. Okay, now let's go to index and take it over. Now you can probably see what I'm up to here by just looking at this for a minute. I've got a button. When I click it, it calls do stuff, and it's a time test. And what I'm doing is I'm setting the start time from now, going into a loop, 
and incrementing a value all the way up to the maximum value of an integer. So this should take a bit of time. I want to see how much time it takes. When we're done, I'll get the current time, and I'll subtract the start time from the end time, get the total milliseconds to a string, and then append ms. And that goes into a message, which as you can see, is defined here, and is displayed in a div. So let's see how long it takes a Maui Blazor application to iterate through this loop. Here we go. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to move things around. I can't do anything because it's in a tight loop, right? But we have a result about four seconds, 4.165 seconds. Wonder if it's any faster the second time. Slightly, but not enough to care. Still about 4.1, 4.2 seconds. All right, let's leave this for the time being and let's go create a .NET MAUI XAML app. All right, so this is just gonna be a .NET MAUI app. And I'm gonna call this MAUI XAML demo. All right, we're gonna give this the same treatment. I want a Windows application. So I double click on the project. I'm going to uncomment the second line. And I'm going to select Windows as my target framework. And I'm gonna run it. All right, so this is what the default uh, XAML app looks like. Welcome to .NET Multi-Platform App UI, MAUI. And we got a little clicker and all that stuff, so that's fine. But I don't like all this purple. Let's get rid of it. To do that, we go to App XAML. Because this is where the colors are set in the resource dictionary. Now, App XAML isn't like App in a Blazor application. This is uh, in a XAML application, or you know, in a, traditionally in a Xamarin Forms application. This is where you put styles and other resources. So we've got the primary and secondary color. The primary is like a purple. And I don't want any of that. So I'm going to replace this whole thing. Now my primary color is black. Secondary is white. And I've changed the background color of a button from that stupid purple to light gray. Now let's see what it looks like. Much better. Now the only thing that's purple is this .NET Martian guy here. I don't know what that is. So let's go to main page. And this is where all this stuff that we just saw is defined. Labels and buttons and an image. And let's just replace that. All right, so you see here, I've got a stack layout with a margin 50. That should give me the same margin as the Maui Blazor app, if you remember. In the main layout, we've got a padding of 50 pixels. So we're trying to keep it somewhat similar. And I've got the label that says Maui XAML Demo, the button that says Time Test. And when I click it, it's gonna call a method called Do Stuff. It's actually a button click handler. And then I have the message down at the bottom. So let's change the code behind to support this. All right, for some reason, uh, Visual Studio doesn't like initialize component, but uh, it does compile and it does run, so I'm not worried about it. It's probably just a preview thing. Then look at this. This dot binding context equals this. This is a little shortcut so that I can just use my code behind as the data context, the binding context for the XAML. So therefore I can have my message property just with a getter and a setter now here's my do stuff. Notice that I have to have this signature here, object sender, event args e, because that's what a click handler is. But it's the same code. Start time, go through to max value, end time, subtract. And then I also have to do this here. 
based not on property change message. And later on, once I refactor this, I'm going to have an explicit getter and setter. And in the setter, I'll call on property changed. So anytime we just set message, it will call on property changed and everybody will be happy. So let's run it. Okay. So pretty close numbers, right? Just for a real comparison, let's run the other one. So 4264 over here, 4170 over here. It's pretty close. Let's try them a second time. 4296 and 4297. So I'm going to call that a draw. So we don't really seem to have any pure code in a loop issues with speed. But as long as I have both of these up here, let's see what's really going on under the hood. I'm going to pull up the task manager and we're going to look at these two. Maui XAML demo has just one executable and it's taking 53.7 megabytes. Maui Blazor demo has an executable and has a whole bunch of Microsoft Edge web view controls, right? And it takes twice as much memory. So why is that? Well, it's because this one is a complete native application. And this guy, the Blazor one, is a hybrid application, right? So there's a native shell and then all the Blazor stuff is done with web views, just like a Cordova application or any kind of hybrid application. Different than a PWA, PWA is a pure browser implementation, pure HTML. So this has that shim, which is about the same size as this one. But then on top of that, you've got all these web views. So just be aware of that. It's going to take more memory if you use Blazor. So the next thing I want to do is make this asynchronous. In other words, I want to be able to tell the user, hey, hold on while we do this calculation and then show the result. So let's start with Blazor. So we have the same do stuff, but now instead of void, it's async task. And I'll change the message to calculating and to update that, I have to do this little trick. First of all, I have to invoke status change and then I actually have to wait about 10 milliseconds seems to do the trick so that the refresh can happen. And then I start the timing and then I put my message out there. All right, let's flip over to the XAML version. This is pretty close. Instead of state has changed, I'm calling on property changed, but I'm also doing that delay. Otherwise, it's the same. So let's run this and we'll run the other guy. We'll run them both. Compare and contrast. XAML demo. Let's run that. Notice I still can't move things around, but at least my cursor works. So wow. That took uh, twice as long. Let's see what happens on the Blazor side. So yeah, twice as long on both of these. So that's the overhead you get with async, whether you're a native or hybrid. All right, now let's talk about doing real stuff. This is a blog post by my friend James Montemagno uh, about Xamarin Essentials 1.7. And Xamarin Essentials is this huge library for Xamarin Forms. It has been for Xamarin Forms. And it's all sorts of things that are put together by the community to handle all these situations. So. He also introduces .NET MAUI Essentials. Hmm, what is that? So if you look at the Xamarin Essentials documentation, you can see what we have here. 
check it out. An accelerometer. Application actions. App information. The theme. A barometer. Battery. Clipboard. Compass. Connectivity. Contacts. Detect shake. Device display information. Device information. Send email messages. Pick a file. Save files to app data. A flashlight switch. Turn it on, turn it off. Geocoding. Geolocation. A gyroscope. Haptic feedback. Launcher. Magnetometer. Uh, run code on the main thread. Open the Maps application. And let's continue on here. There's more. Media Picker. Open a browser. Orientation. Permissions. A phone dialer. Platform extensions. Preferences. Take a screenshot. Securely store data. Send text and website links to other apps. Create an SMS message for sending, text-to-speech, unit converters, version tracking, vibrate. And there's a new stuff in the web authenticator, which we will talk about in an upcoming show because uh, security has been on the forefront of my mind lately. And I want a good way to do this in a Maui application. And in the Xamarin form space, it wasn't all that clear. And now that things are moving to Maui and settling down a little bit, there's stuff to talk about there. Wouldn't it be cool if you could do all this stuff? Well, we're going to start with the clipboard. And this allows you to read and write to the clipboard. Can we do it in Blazor? Yeah, you bet we can. So I'm going to open my underscore imports razor. And Maui Essentials, which is essentially the Xamarin Essentials code base, but for Maui, is already there. It's in the box. So all I have to do is say using Microsoft.Maui Essentials, and now I can create a clipboard object and write to it. So we're going to add a method here. Copy time to clipboard. We've set the message. The current time is blah, blah, blah. And then we just await clipboard.setTextAsync, passing the message, and it sets it to the clipboard. Now we need a button for that. And there you go. Let's watch it in action. All right. Look at that. The current time is blah, 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 146.44. Let's pull up Notepad and paste. Ta da! All right, let's do the same thing in the XAML side. So, again, we need that routine copy time to clipboard. It's pretty much the same, except that we have to call the property changed. And let's go over to the main page XAML and add the copy to clipboard button. So I've got my copy time to clipboard, which is that method I just pasted in there. Uh, we've got our text and a margin, some horizontal options. Yeah, all right, let's give it a shot. All right, how about that? Now you may have noticed in the code, Microsoft Maui Essentials, the using statement is already there. It's just there. So use it. For the next feature, let's start on the Blazor side because it's really easy. What I want to do is I want a checkbox, and, a, and the checkbox is going to toggle whether or not the clipboard button is blue or red. So this button right here is going to be either blue background or red background. In the case of Blazor, we can achieve that with a class, just btn-primary or btn-danger. So let's do that. So at the top, I've got a checkbox. I'm binding the value to a Boolean alert switch property right there. Now, if we go down to the button, 
the copy time to clipboard button, I've got a class equals button class. And this is a read only property. And if alert switch is true, I'm going to return btn space btn dash danger. Otherwise, primary. So this is right out of Bootstrap. Bootstrap has these classes for buttons. Danger is red, primary is blue. So essentially, when alert switch is true, it's going to be red. When alert switch is false, it's going to be blue. Everything else is the same. Let's see what happens. All right, it's blue. When I click toggle alert, it's red. Blue, red. Still works, even though it's red. Or blue, doesn't matter. All we did was change the class. That was pretty easy, right? I think so. All right, let's try the XAML side. Now, how do you think we should do this? Let's try something. Just by using the button itself, copy time to clipboard, let's set the button's background color to red, right in here. It's already there, we don't have to have another button. Let's go over here. And I'm going to give it my button a name, copy to clipboard button. And so right in here, you might expect, I could just say copy to clipboard button dot background color equals colors red. Now, of course, I need to qualify that. Microsoft Maui graphics is a brand new in preview nine for Maui. Uh, namespace in which they've abstracted the colors away from the platforms. And I'm just going to make this public. All right, let's see what happens now. Nothing. I mean, the button click still works, but it didn't set it. Hmm. Well, can I do like an on property changed? Copy to clipboard button background color. Let's see if that works. No. There doesn't seem to be a way to directly do this, and there isn't. Now, there's a couple of ways I can achieve this. The first thing I saw was in preview nine, they've got this border control. So check it out. You can put a border around any layout or control to add borders and independent control of each corner. And also you get background, right? So I wonder if I set the background of the border to red or blue, and then the button itself, I set the background color to transparent. Huh, I wonder if that would work. Let's try it. All right, so a couple of big changes here. One, I've got my local namespace because I need to reach inside the application. And so local is going to be my namespace for local stuff. And I need a converter, a bool to brush converter. In XAML, when you have something like a Boolean and you want to return something like a brush based on the Boolean value, that's what the converter does. And we'll make that, but you can see that the border background is bound to alert switch, which is the Boolean. And I'm passing it through this converter, bool to brush converter. Now the background color of the button is transparent. All right, so let's add that bool to brush converter. So in order to create a converter, you just have to implement the I value converter interface which has a convert and a convert back. I'm not interested in converting back, just taking a Boolean, returning a brush. So I've got my red brush and blue brush, they're solid color brushes, and I convert the value that comes in to a Boolean. And if it's true, I return the red brush, and if it's false, I return the blue brush. All right, now we have to change this as well. So, I've got my alert switch now as a Boolean property because we didn't have that before. And I've also expanded the message property to have the on property 
changed right there in the setter as the alert switch also has it. So that means I can just set message up here and down here and I don't have to do the property change bit. All right, but this is the main deal right here. I've added this alert switch Boolean. So let's give this a shot. Hey, that seems to work. That's pretty cool. I like new and shiny stuff. Yeah, but guess what? Let's see if it works on Android. So I'm going to switch this to Android. Well, what do we see? I see white text on a white background. And I still see all white. And it's because that transparent color doesn't work on Android. The button still works and the clipboard works, but that transparent color doesn't work. So we got to try something else. So I stumbled on this uh, blog post, customize controls with handlers from October 25th. And it basically says that the new Maui way to do native code is with a handler. So a handler is, think of it like an event handler, right? It's a handler. Anytime somebody sets the background color, let's say, of a control, this handler gets control, and then you can use native code with a if statement. Let me find a good one. Here you go. So this is looking for a background color. And if it's Android, we're going to use this code. If it's iOS, we're going to use this code. And Windows, use that code because they're a little bit different. This one we're calling set background color. This one we're actually setting the property and the border style. And this one we're setting the background. So I'm going to just take this code right here, paste it into our app partial class, and let's see what happens. That would be right here. Okay, well, we have some errors here, don't we? First of all, this isn't grayed out, meaning that it doesn't understand what this is what I came up with. We're going to use the button handler, and for background color, anytime that an element or a view's background color is set, this is going to fire. And we get the H for the handler and V for the view. And it, I'm checking to see if the view is a button. And if it is, I'm casting it to a button, getting the background color. And if it's Android, I'm using some reflection to get the method set background color and then invoking that with color.toNative, color I got from here. And you have to get the native version of that. And if it's Windows, I'm using reflection to get the background color property. And if that's not null, I'm calling set value on that native view to color native. Now that this is in place, we just need to be able to change the background color of the button based on that checkbox. So we're going to use, you got it, another converter. This one's for real. This is going to be, rather than a bool to brush converter, it's going to be a bool to color converter. So this one is returning colors red. If the Boolean is true, colors blue, if it's false. So here we have our button. The name is clipboard button. I guess we don't really need the name. And the background color we've bound to alert switch using the bool to color converter. So rather than the background of a border, we're just go ahead and changing the background color based on alert switch. And we still have our alert switch up here. Tell you what, let's run it in Windows first. And that works. And just to show you that we have to use this code right here, I'm just going to go ahead and comment it out and run it again. See? Not working. That handler is absolutely essential. Oh, we're changing the background color, all right, but it's not actually taking. All right, now let's go back to Android. All right, well, that looks better. We have a blue button, and yeah, the button still works. All right, let's hit the toggle. Yeah, 
All right, see? It takes a little extra work because you have to write native code. Hmm, I wonder if our Blazor app works on Android. Let's try it. All right, well, here it is. Let's toggle the color. Sure looks like it works to me. So why did the Blazor app work on Android? And we had all sorts of trouble with the XAML app. Well, remember, the XAML app is a native app, whereas this is in a browser, essentially. And you know, a web page is a web page is a web page. The browser is essentially the cross-platform application. They've already done the hard work to figure out how to show button colors on every platform. And Blazor is leveraging that. Whereas in the XAML application, we have to write all that stuff for each platform differently because we're right down there on the metal. I hope this was a good introduction to uh, Maui and the differences between writing in Blazor and writing in XAML. There are trade-offs. There are pros and cons of each approach. I'm not going to tell you which one I like best, but you can probably guess. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.